Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa Rasulullah. You're watching Islam and Muslims. And we're very happy to have you with our program today. And we invite you to share with us today because we're talking on the subject of Islam being the world's fastest growing religion. Now, this is a phenomenon that we can't deny. We've had politicians and the media confirm this to us that Islam, in spite of all the things that are going on, all the negative publicity, so to speak, and all of the actions that are taking place and what some people are doing in the name of Islam, yet Islam is still the fastest growing religion. We're trying to account for how could that be. We've talked about it in general, and we talked about the miracles of the Quran. We've talked about the subject of what Islam teaches. And then we've talked also about some specific cases and talked about how in our own family, for instance, how many of us came to Islam and what's going on. Subject that we're talking about right now is the priests and preachers coming to Islam. My father was an ordained minister and worked very hard to help support different denominations of the churches in fundraising, making money, and keeping them going. I worked also in the capacity of music in the churches. I was in the music business and music minister and preacher on the side. We had a Catholic priest friend of ours who was a missionary in the Latin countries for over 14 years. My wife was a born-again Christian, very active and very much a believer in Christianity. Yet all of us, we came to Islam at the same time. And that's the little story I'm going to share with you in this segment right here called Priests and Preachers Entering Islam. I've already told you that I had met a Muslim, an Egyptian, and that in trying to convert him to Christianity, he had told me he would go to Christianity or any religion if it was better than his, but he needed proof. And when I said, I thought religion is based on faith, not proof, he said to me that in Islam we have both. We have proof and faith. One of the things we talked about in earlier segments was the miracle of the Quran and we talked about how the Quran has been preserved in its original context, original language in the hearts and minds of every single Muslim living today have a certain portion of the Quran in their mind. And over nine million, nine million have totally memorized the Quran living today right now. And it's all exactly the same word for word, dot for dot, no difference. So this is one of the things. But let me tell you what happened to us specifically now. We were sitting around the table night after night talking about religion, talking about the very different versions of the Bible. The Catholic priest has his Bible, which had 73 books in it. We were Protestants. We only had 66 books, and they don't exactly match each other. And there's different versions of the various Protestant Bibles, but there's no original extant anywhere. So when we turned to the Muslim and asked him, what about your book? He said, we only have one. And he began to show us what the Quran was. We became fascinated. We want to know more about it. One day, the Catholic priest, he asked the Muslim, he said, can I go to your church with you? The mosque or masjid as they call it in Arabic. He said, sure, come on. And he went. And we were all anticipating some kind of explanation when he got back. So when he got back, we took him aside. Father Peter Jacobs was his name. We said, uh, Pete, of course, we didn't call him Father because we weren't, uh, you know, Catholics. We said, uh, Pete, what was it? What was it like? Did they, like, slaughter animals or do some weird stuff? He said, no, 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 no. He said, it's a very nice, quiet place, a big chamber where everybody gathered together. They lined up, they prayed, and they left. And I said, what? That's it? They lined up, prayed, and left, that's all? He said, yeah, that's what they do. I said, what kind of music did they have? He said, they didn't have any music. I said, what? How are you going to worship God with no music? He said, well, they did it. Hmm. Well, we pondered about that, thought about it for a while, you know. Then on another day, the priest asked him again, can I go with you again? And he went with him again. And he was gone all day and a part of the night. When they came in, we were worried why they were so late getting in. But when they got there, we kind of understood something. Because when they got out of the car, here was the Muslim guy. He had normal American-looking clothes, you know. No beard, anything like that. But here's somebody with him all of a sudden. We didn't see the priest. Here's this guy wearing a long white gown. And he had a white, uh, like, pillbox cap on his head. They call it a kufiya. And I looked at him. I said, Pete, is that you? Did you become a Muslim? He said, yes. I entered Islam today. And I was shocked. And I got out my video camera, and I wanted to, you know, put him on camera and talk to him about what was his experience. 
I really thought about that. And I kept talking about it. I was so amazed. And I went up to bed that night. We lived all in the same house. My dad had a big house out in the country, you know. And I went upstairs with my wife, and I was talking to her about it. And all of a sudden, she said, you know what? I want a divorce. I said, huh? What's going on? That's not my subject. Well, be, she said, all this talking about religion and what's going on with religion. And, you know, a, a, a Muslim can't be married to a Christian. And I said, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did I say I want to be a Muslim? I didn't say that. Did I say that? I didn't want to be no Muslim, okay? I, did. I was telling you about the Catholic priest, okay? Not me. I'll end the subject. Let's, uh, you know, change the subject. She said, no, uh, a Muslim can't be married to a Christian. I said, no, if you heard what the man told us, he said that a Muslim woman couldn't be married to a Christian man. She said, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I want to be a Muslim. And you're a Christian. And I said, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. There's some good news here. Good news. Good news is, I didn't know how to tell you this, but now I will. I, too, would like to be a Muslim. She said, I don't believe you. You're either a liar now or you were a liar a few minutes ago. You're either a Christian or you're a Muslim. And either way, you're a liar, and I don't need to be married to a liar. So get out. So I left. I didn't know what to do. And on the way down the steps, I went, where am I going? This is my father's house. So I went to the Muslim, and I woke him up, and I said, we got to talk. So what I did, I asked the Muslim to go for a walk for, with me. It was at night, so we went for a little walk, and we walked the neighborhood. We lived out in the country, but there were some little roads out there, a little neighborhood area. And as we went around talking, talking, I talked about so many things. He gave me answers on so many issues. The sun was coming up, and I realized it, and I told him, you need to go pray your prayer, whatever you pray in the morning. And he did. He went to pray. And then I had a feeling I need to do something. I need to make a step here myself. I need to go out as a leap of faith and do something and check myself out. So I decided to kind of look at myself and say, who am I? What am I doing? And where am I going? I went out behind my father's house out there in the country. I found a big old piece of plywood, you know, and where nobody could see me, I figured I'll do this. And I aimed myself toward the east, you know, where the Muslims face to pray. And I said, I'm going to do this. Because I've read it in the Bible, too, that the prophets used to fall on their faces to prostrate to Almighty God. Let me try that, and I'm going to ask God something. And I put my head down on the ground on that piece of plywood in the same direction I'd seen that Muslim praying. And I said these words, Oh God, if you're there, guide me. That's it. And I said it with all sincerity. I opened up my heart and I was really saying, Oh God, if you're there, guide me. Now when I raised my head up and I looked around, I didn't see any dancing elves or fairies or angels. I didn't hear any music. I didn't see any rainbows. It was just a cloudy day in Texas. But I could see something else. To see inside of myself in a way and realize that you know what the problem isn't outside the problem was inside I needed to do something about me to correct some of the biases the prejudice some of my attitudes toward other people and through that I would be able to get closer to the correct understanding and that's where I had to begin and in fact that's where all people have to begin